No Country for Old Men, the 2007 Coen Brothers movie based on the Cormac McCarthy book, won four Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Directing and Best Writing. There are a million and one wonderful things you could say about this film, and it deserves its place among a list of the very best ever made. But one thing stands out above all in No Country for Old Men, and that's its antagonist, Anton Chigurh, played by Javier Bardem. There have been a bunch of great bad guys in movie history. Hannibal Lecter, Darth Vader, The Joker, Agent Smith, T-1000, Hans Lander, The Alien. I could go on. But if you're a young scriptwriter wanting to learn how to write a terrifying antagonist, or even just a film lover wishing to understand what it is about certain characters that really makes your skin crawl, you could do a lot worse than looking at Anton Chigurh. No Country for Old Men tells the story of Llewellyn Moss and Ed Tom Bell, played by Josh Brolin and Tommy Lee Jones, respectively. Moss is a retired Vietnam vet out hunting pronghorns when he comes across the aftermath of a failed drug deal. The $2 million he finds there is too much of a temptation, and he takes it home to his wife Carla Jean, played by Kelly MacDonald. Feeling guilty about a dying man he left at the drug deal, Moss heads back that night to take him some water. Unfortunately, he's found there and attacked. Moss manages to escape, but not without giving his assailants his identity. To find Moss, who quickly scarpers across country, the drug dealers hire a man called Anton Chigurh, who quickly decides to cut out the middleman and go after the money himself. Meanwhile, Ed Tom Bell, Tyrell County Sheriff, gets wind of the drug deal and Moss's part in it. Understanding the danger he's in, Bell sets about finding him to keep him safe, as well as searching for Chigurh, the mystery menace haunting him. But will Moss manage to keep one step ahead of Chigurh and his life, and will Ed Tom Bell get his man? In 2018, a group of psychiatrists studied 400 movies and decided that Anton Chigurh was the most clinically accurate psychopath in any of them. This is really important in No Country for Old Men because it's this careful design of Chigurh's character by directors Joel and Ethan Cohen that makes him such a terrifying villain. Christopher Brooker, in his brilliant work on story structure, described the antagonistic forces of stories as monsters. They, in his words, are often terrible, grim, misshapen, yet also beautiful and elegant. They're murderous, cunning, treacherous, vicious. They're strange, sinister, nightmarish and demonic. Anton Chigurh is this list of characteristics personified. Right from the start, the Coen brothers wanted to unsettle their audience with his appearance and chose his iconic pudding bowl haircut from a photo of a brothel patron in 1979. Chigurh is tall too, lumbering. His face is bent and angular, his eyes dark and hooded. Yet there's an elegance to him too, not in his appearance, but the way he operates. He's calm, efficient, never flustered. He gets the job done. Chigurh is as murderous as they come, which I suppose is expected of a villain in a film like this, but it's the people he kills, the way he decides whether to kill them and why, that makes him such a frightening villain. There's a capriciousness to it, like the wonderful scene in the gas station when he lets a coin toss decide the fate of the kindly old man there, or the way he murders Moss's wife at the end of the film just because he said to Moss he would. There's something deeply unsettling about this code of conduct. We can understand killings based on passion, but murder based on chance or a twisted promise shows such a lack of empathy that it sends chills up and down your spine. There's something clever about the air of mystery weaved around Chigurh too. We never find out about his past, where he came from, what he did before the events of the story. He's an enigma. He says very little during the film, pretty much only what he needs to say to get what he wants. All of this lends a supernatural feel to him. He floats through the world like a ghost, appearing and disappearing silently. The thought of coming home to find him sitting in your front room like Carla Jean does is nightmare fuel. I've been labouring this description of Chigurh because, along with Tommy Lee Jones' character of Sheriff Bell, it's a brilliant example of how the hero-villain dynamic should work in a film. It would be easy, on the surface, to think that Llewellyn Moss is the hero of No Country for Old Men, and he is to a degree in the sense that he's the one Chigurh is chasing. But the real hero is Ed Tom Bell. An antagonist in a story, a true villain, should be competing for the same thing as the hero. It's what sets up the clash between good and evil. We see that here. Ed Tom and Chigurh are both searching for Moss, just for different reasons. But more than that, a hero and antagonist clash best when they have different ways of operating in the world. Ed Tom is a good man. He looks after his town, keeps people safe, cares about those around him. Chigurh is the exact opposite, and everything he does tests Ed Tom. 
The sheriff just can't understand that level of evil, and it's fascinating to watch their worldviews go head to head, despite them never really appearing in the same scene. It's a measure of Ed Tom's bravery, in fact, that when he has the chance to get out of a potential final confrontation with Shigur, he heads into danger anyway. And it's a measure of the horror of Shigur that he could frighten a man as brave as Ed Tom in the first place. But Shigur does win. That's the key difference between him and many other antagonists. How do you defend against it? Asks another sheriff of Ed Tom Bell towards the end of the film. And he's right, they can't. By close of play, Shigur has the $2 million and everybody who opposes him is either dead or, in the case of Ed Tom Bell, retired. Think how rare that is in a film, for the villain to comprehensively win. Of that list I made at the start, only really Hannibal Lecter compares. There are, of course, a million other brilliant things about No Country for Old Men. The acting is magnificent and Javier Bardem deserved his best supporting gong. Ed Tom Bell is Tommy Lee Jones's best role too. There's a sadness to him, brought to life especially well in the film's famous last scene where he recounts his dreams after retirement. The cinematography is chef's kiss sublime. I mean, just take a look at some of these. And the Coen brothers rarely make a bad film, <clears throat> the lady killers, <clears throat> but the tension they manage to wring out of a pretty low dialogue, low music, low movement film like this one is incredible. But it is that central antagonist that truly elevates No Country for Old Men. They say a movie is only as good as its bad guy. It's why we remember the alien Terminator and the Joker so well. And you could make a good argument that Shigur is right up there with the best we've ever had. Let's raise a toast to Cormac McCarthy, wherever he is now, for dreaming him up. Anyway, nothing more to say. This is Movie Maverick, signing out.